There are very strong stereotypes of adolescents, often quite negative stereotypes. You see them in the media now. You also see them back in, um, in, in Shakespeare and even in Plato and Aristotle, these stereotypes of adolescents being badly behaved, making silly decisions, taking lots of risks. Lazy. Irresponsible. Antisocial. Rude. Disrespectful. High maintenance. Those stereotypes are based partly in some reality. There is some evidence that adolescents take more risks than other age groups. Rebellious. Did we say that one? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> clueless. Yeah, clueless. One of the kind of nuances that the stereotype misses out is the context that risk-taking tends to take place in. So if you think about adolescent typical risk-taking, things like smoking and drinking alcohol and experimenting with drugs, dangerous driving. Those kinds of risks don't tend to take place when the young person is on their own. It's normally when they're with their friends. And there's a lot of evidence from many different labs around the world that adolescents are particularly influenced by their peers. I don't think I particularly take risks, although I have done small things like drunk a lot of ketchup before. <laughs> I didn't know how much to take, so I didn't want like risk taking too little too much, so I just took it all. And if I was on my own, I wouldn't have, because there would be no need to. I don't like ketchup. <laughs> so, for example, sticking with the example of driving risks, a classic experiment which has now been replicated several times by Larry Steinberg and his colleagues, um, has shown that if you bring people into the lab, you get them to play a driving video game where you have to get around a circuit as quickly as possible, you find that actually, interestingly, the number of risks that different age groups take is around the same number when they're on their own, but if the participant has a couple of friends standing behind them, that significantly increases the number of driving risks adolescents take and young adults take under the age of 25, but it has no effect on the number of risks that adults over the age of 25 take. In terms of the experiments we've done in my lab, uh, we often look at um, things like social influence, and one of, one of the experiments we did looked at social influence on risk perception. So here we, here we were asking participants to um, rate how risky they think different everyday situations are. So things like driving without a seatbelt or crossing a street on a red light or cycling without a helmet. The critical finding in this experiment was that young adolescents aged 12 to 14 are more influenced by uh, people their own age, by other teenagers, and that wasn't true for any other age group. So children and older adolescents and adults are more likely to be influenced by adults than by teenagers. My friends are very important to me because they, they're like, I see them almost every single day and like, they just, they make me feel safe as well. If I don't have my friends, sometimes I look a little bit lost. One of the things that uh, matters in adolescence is to be accepted by your peer group and not to be excluded by your peers. So we know from work by Kat Sebastian and other people that adolescents are hypersensitive to social exclusion. People aren't being accepted for who they are and they're being forced to change and like big things like social media affecting this like if you don't have social media people are going to exclude you no matter who you are even though they shouldn't so people change who they are to fit in. What it means is that uh, they're going to pay more attention to their own peers than they are to adults. So if you're, if you're organising, say, a, um, a health campaign aimed at young people, what seems to matter most is changing social norms and educating young people themselves to run campaigns, anti-smoking or anti-bullying campaigns. Um, that has a much bigger impact on young people's attitudes towards things like smoking and bullying than adults running the same kinds of campaigns. That absolutely fits with the new neuroscience showing that social influence has the biggest effect on adolescent decision-making and risk-taking bigger than other, other um, influences. I think one thing I would have really appreciated knowing about during my teenage years was how the brain develops uh, during adolescence and how this is a period of life where everything is quite unstable, both in terms of your social world and your biology, your, your hormones and your, and your brain. And that's a very natural, adaptive, developmental period where things are changing and where you'll come out the other end as an independent adult. <laughs>